Hi guys! So before we will start with our next lesson, uh, let's have a recap of our previous discussions which are um, scenario and also the class-based modeling. So as what you know and also as what you understood, um, those modeling are as a primary tools to use in modeling the requirements of an organization. I also would like to emphasize that um, modeling the user requirements is a way for us to communicate with the stakeholders. Another, uh, it's also one way for us to validate, review, and check if the requirements that we have gathered from the users are correct and consistent. Okay. And also, after you've gathered the requirements from the user, as an analyst or as a software engineer, we will now translate it in a form of diagram to present it, uh, to be presented to the development team. Okay. So this time, um, I will now present to you guys the other tool in modeling requirements or in the requirements modeling. Okay. Because there are some problem dom uh, there are some problem domains that the class base and also the scenario base are not enough. Okay, um, there are some situations that it demands an examination about how an application behaves because of an external events. So this is almost often the case in the web-based systems or the applications that you, that we're gonna use or we're gonna develop, where we need to see how the contents and the functionality combine to provide an end user the ability to successfully navigate and uh, to, to navigate an application and achieve the usage goals. In this case, another set of modeling tools can be utilized. Okay, These tools are generally referred to as behavior-based tools because they model their, um, they model the software's behavior. Okay? So we're actually we're in our third modeling tool or modeling requirements. So please listen and hopefully you got all the information needed. Okay? Okay. So the behavioral model indicates how the software will respond to external events or stimuli. Um, if we will compare it to the use case diagram, this diagram and, um, intended to model how the user interacts to the system. So that's the use case diagram. But in the state diagram, um, it, um, it, it is actually intended on how the system behaves and responds to a specific event. Okay. The modeling processes related to the behavior base starts from first um, reviewing or evaluating all the use cases to understand or to be able to mentally visualize the various interactions of the end user. By doing so, um, we can also understand the sequence of interactions. The next thing to do is identify the events that drive the interaction sequence and understand how these events relate to specific objects within the software environment. So this represented, by the way, um, by the use case scenarios in our previous discussion in the use case. Okay, and then we represent these interactions using our two modeling tools in the behavior-based modeling. We have the state diagram and also we have the sequence diagram. Later on, I will discuss each diagram, okay? And also, as, as with other models, we need to review the model to verify the accuracy and also the, uh, the consistency. Uh, we can actually get the end user to help review the models if our understanding of the requirements are complete and correct. Okay, so let us start with the state diagram. Okay, the state diagram represents the active states for each class and the events that cause changes between the active classes. We can also consider the state diagram as a way to elaborate the, uh, 
it's a, it's a way to elaborate or describe in more detail how a class behaves. This is also the reason why we discussed first the class-based modeling or the class diagram because all of the classes you have instantiated in the class diagram will be used here in the state diagram. Okay? And also, take note, guys, state diagram is also known as the state chart, um, state machine diagram, also a state transition diagram. So please don't, um, uh, please don't be confused about that. Okay? So basically, um, if we will talk about the state diagrams, um, it is actually defined for each relevant class and possible life history of the given class or an object. So if we will talk about object, it is actually a class. Okay? So what do I mean? I mean that it describes the possible states of the class when it describes, uh, then it describes the events that cause a transition from one state to another. Lastly, it describes the actions that result from a state change. Okay? So later on, I will discuss, or in our next um, presentation, I will discuss the two states. So we have passive and we also have the active state. If we will talk about the passive state, passive state is simply the current state of all the object's attributes. This is the point when an object is instantiated, but take note, guys, it does not participate in any event just yet. Okay? On the other hand, an active state indicates the current status of the object as it undergoes a continuing transformation or processing. This is the time when objects are accessed due to an event. Okay? So I will describe and explain to you right now the notations or the symbols that we will use to, to construct a state diagram. Okay. So actually to let you know, uh, I actually use the class grade rate. Okay. I actually use this class grade rate. And actually the symbols or the notations used in the state diagrams um, so this, uh, uh, in the state diagram are the following. So we have the start and the end terminator. So this is actually our start and end terminator. So this is our initial state. I believe it is also the same uh, with our previous diagram that we discussed. And also this is the end terminator. This is the final state. Okay. We also have the um, rectangles. Um, the rectangles here... It actually represents um, the state or the trigger of the class. Okay, we have basically we have um, three uh, three states. We have the pending, we have the active, and we also have the lapse. Okay, the other one we also have the arrows. Okay, or our system flow, um, and in flow charting. Okay, uh, if we will talk about arrows, arrows show the transition from one state to another. If we will talk about transition, it shows the event um, or the actions. Okay. In the case of the class grade rate, um, the valid states um, stated right now in my diagram um, are pending state and also the lapse. Okay. I also would like to um, let you know that an event or a trigger must occur to force an object to make a transition from one state to another. So there should be an event just like this. There should be a, an event. It depends if this is an external event that will trigger to have, um, to have this state to be active. So without the event that happened before um, the state, um, the state will not happen. Okay, so after the state happened, um, the transition will also flow. Okay, later on, I want you to take note, um, guys, that we have three things to consider. Um, we have the guard, uh, we have the transitions, and we also have the states. Okay, the states are actually our classes. Okay, take note on that one. 
and also the event can be an attribute okay take note the event this one an example event okay the event can be an attribute or an action with a boolean condition so if we will talk about the boolean condition this is actually the guard that i said earlier okay so if we will describe um, this state diagram okay this example from the class grade rate uh, we have the initial state here so there there is no event happened before the um, before the pending state so basically the pending state um, um, have a transition that goes to when the rate start uh, when the rate start date which is this is actually the attribute of the um, of the previous class it's less than or equal to the current state it will be triggered and it will be active okay and later on um, after the active state happen um, when the rate finish date is less than or equal to the current date it will be less so after a year the event will become terminated because there is a final state I have a I have another example on the next slide okay so here is another example using the class class so I use the class class example um, class class example that I shown in our previous lectures or in our previous discussions in this example notice that the states are triggered by an external events so we have how many states do we have so we have pending checking admitting rate listing and we also have updating so these states are triggered by um, uh, uh, these states are triggered by the external events or triggered by an event so basically um the pending was triggered by the student selects a section then also the checking was triggered by the student adds um, a section to the list sorry i forgot the s here so there should be an s <laughs> also um the updating triggered by the student click save and also students yeah it's still the same click save okay so if I will explain this um, state diagram from the class class so this is our initial state so there is an event happen so the student will select a section so after the student will select a section the uh, the event will be uh, the event it will be transferred to the pending state so in the pending state you can see the operations see so the operation available in the pending state it's loading a data okay so after it loads a data it will throw again another event to the next state so our event here it's student adds a section to the list after the student adds a section to the list um, the state will become checking it's not pending anymore so the state will become checking then inside the checking there will be two operations or method that will happen so take note that these methods were actually named uh, I know that you already instantiated these uh, methods or operations in your class diagram all you need to do is just to use that one here okay so in checking state uh, we can use get capacity we can also use get enlisted operations so after this um, you will encounter a this one a boolean um, condition so you can see here a guard I know that the guard will be explained in the next slide but uh, I need to discuss the flow that's why it will be uh, it will be inserted so if the enlisted it's less than the capacity it will be the event will be thrown to the admitting state but if ever that the enlisted is greater than or equal to the capacity um, the event or um, the event will be thrown to the wake listing state where in the wake listing state it can only do the method wait list okay and also in the admitting part um, it can add one okay after that one um, for example in the admitting uh, in the admitting state um, there will be another event that will happen the student will click save after the student will click save um, the state will now become updating so in the updating 
uh, all we need to do is to call the method or the operation save. After that, it ends the event or it ends the program. Okay, as simple as that. Next one. So just like what I said earlier, in addition, a guard is used to control which state an object gets into. If I were to use an analogy, the guards behave like the decision boxes in a flowchart. So basically, uh, this uh, uh, these are our guards. Okay, so a guard is a Boolean condition that must be satisfied in order for the con uh, in order for the transition to occur. So again, there will be no transitions or there will be no events. Um, um, for, sorry, sorry. Um, if the guard, if the Boolean condition will be satisfied, um, the transition will or the event will occur. Take note on that one. Okay. In this example, the capacity check, um, the capacity checks serve as a guard. In general, the guard from a transition usually depends on the value of one or more attributes of the object or of the class. Take note on that. Okay, furthermore, uh, we can also add actions or operations to the class states. So an action occurs, uh, an action occurs concurrently with state transition or as a consequence of the transition. Um, the actions involve one or more operations of the object, such as in this example, um, various operations of the object occur as it transitions from one state to another. So take note ha, um, regarding with uh, regarding the operations or the methods that we're going to use inside the state, um, you need to use the do with the um, colon, okay? Do, then what is going on. For example, do, colon, what is going on? It's loading the data. Or it really depends on what methods or operation you have used before in the, um, in the, um, in the class diagram, okay? So there should be a do, then the colon, then load data, okay?